Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. It's Wednesday, also known as Hump Day, or also known as It's Wednesday, my dudes. How you doing? It's good to see you back here. I want to apologize for yesterday's title. Uh, I was made aware from several different sources that uh, it was quite offensive to the reviewers who put all of the hours into reviewing Ryzen 3000 for me to insinuate that their reviews were wrong. That was not the intention. Uh, I corrected the title after I woke up and saw the flurry of my failure. So yeah, there it is. Fix the title. I'm sorry. We'll do better in the future. Anyways, today's video is brought to you by Displate. Check out dope metal prints at displate.com forward slash UFD tech official forward slash not forward slash. That's not a thing. Anyways, get them amazingness metal prints. UFD is a coupon code. Save 15%. Anyways, let's get into the first bit of news, which is uh, Ryzen 3000 has really put it on Intel. You know, they're just, you know, they're, they're wallowing in their misery of not being able to hit 10 nanometers. Well, not being accustomed to being behind, it looks like a, an opportunistically timed leak has come out of the next generation of Intel CPU. So what we can see from the slide, which is actually a rumor that we've had before, but this one looks much more substantiated since it looks like an Intel slide, is that Intel is going to be bumping up their core count to 10 cores and 20 threads on their highest end chip. This isn't a particularly new rumor, but what is interesting is thanks to Ryzen 3 thousand what we're probably going to see for the first time in a while is Intel isn't going to be raising their prices for the better chips and not only is the top end 10,900k CPU 10900k that 9900k that doesn't work at all Intel you suck at naming things now anyways they're gonna be launching it supposedly at $499 and they're raising the TDP for the first time ever to hit 105 watts so that they can have their boost clock say 5.2 gigahertz which is a 200 megahertz increase over the 9900k that we currently have so Intel actually bringing some new stuff out the i7s will then be like a 9900k eight cores 16 threads for 339 dollars and boost up to 5.1 gigahertz so the 10 700k is going to be better than the 9900k for about 170 dollars cheaper which would put it 10 dollars more than the 3700x which would mean that it's the better choice at that price point at least a according to like what we know of Intel CPUs and considering this is still going to be based on Skylake 14 nanometer plus 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 that I mean we have all the information that we need to know an 8 core 16 thread 5.1 gigahertz boost which will probably be able to overclock to 5.1 gigahertz will beat the 3700x in gaming and then the 10 core at 5.2 gigahertz will likely get really close to the nine, the 3900X. I'm pretty sure the 3900X will likely pull ahead. We're not likely to see new IPC improvements here, but one of the things that will likely piss everybody off is that it's gonna be a new socket, LGA 1159. So uh, enjoy your new motherboards, peasants. Bloody peasant! Oh, what a giveaway. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, eh? That's what I'm on about. Do you see him repressing me? You can't use LGA 1151 anymore, so your Z390 is now useless. Go for Z490 or 470, whatever they're gonna call it. And fun fact, no PCI Express 4.0 support, although they will make DDR4 3200 native, which is also a good thing, but not necessarily. Basically, this means Intel's getting competitive, but also will lose on certain features like PCI Express 4.0, and it's going to be ridiculous because I can install a 3900X on my X470 motherboard, heck, probably even my X370 motherboard, but I can't do that with this 10900K. I have to buy a $500 CPU plus another motherboard in order to bring you guys any videos on it. This is a little ridiculous. Intel, you you you, you look like you, you are trying to compete, but then you don't fix the things that make you worse. And then they also put out a press release about their next generation chiplet design stuff around Project Foveros, showing off new tools for how they're going to do it with the EMIB and all of the Foveros stuff, stacking chips, making their own 10 nanometer chiplets and stubbing them together, just kind of like AMD did with Ryzen 3000. Speaking of Ryzen 3000, however, if you want to pick them up on Amazon, finally, they are available. Previously, it was like Newegg and Micro Center in the United States. Now they're available on Amazon. And if you wouldn't mind, you could use our affiliate code down in the video description to pick them up. And that way we would make a little bit of money. You guys would get a Ryzen 3000 chip and it'd be great. However, it still looks like um, the main ones like the 3900X and 3700X are sold out. It feels like those were the ones everybody wanted and they didn't make enough of those. So. 
3900X still not around, only really available to reviewers and the first few people who could hit up a micro center. Like even in South Africa, there, there's no ETA on when we're gonna get the chip. And then there's a really cool article by Tech Power Up. They ran a 3900X on a cheap B350 motherboard. So if you wanna check that out in the video description, you can. It actually works surprisingly well. Go check out the article, it's intriguing. And then also we reported yesterday about how uh, certain motherboards don't have a big enough BIOS to support everything that's coming out with Ryzen 3000, so you have to cut features and whatnot. MSI's response to this is that they're gonna be launching A320, B450, and X470 motherboards again with just an increased BIOS chip. So they're gonna have 256 megabit BIOS instead of 128, which would make it confusing because it would then mean like some of the X470 are not compatible with everything and then some are, and I'm not sure how they're gonna distinguish this. And in case you wanna water cool your Navi cards, EK has announced that they're coming out with water blocks for the 5700 and 5700 XT. I'm gonna do my best to get my hands on these. They're supposed to be available towards the end of July, so hold on to your horses for that. It's not really gonna help with the 5700 since AMD put an artificial clock limiter on that, so it doesn't get anywhere near the 5700 XT, but it'll help with the XT version. And then, in case you want better DX12 performance on your NVIDIA GPU, you might wanna consider updating to the latest drivers because they have announced that you should see up to 30% increase in certain games. That includes Metro Exodus, Strains Brigade, and Tom Clancy's The Division 2. So they're saying it's an average of about 16% increase on the DX12 API for those games, with Metro Exodus seeing the largest at a 31% bump. So it also has support for the Super GPUs, which I need to now try to install because mine didn't work previously. And then, in case you care about MacBooks at all, or you care about the death of MacBooks, this next story might intrigue you, which is Apple has kind of covertly updated their MacBook lineup. They've cut the actual MacBook, which had a single port and was useless for everybody everywhere because even the MacBook Air had two ports the heck. So they got rid of that and they also got rid of the non-touch bar MacBook Pro. So say goodbye to those. And then they also introduced a price drop to the MacBook Air, bringing it from $1,099 down to $999. So Mac, Apple, they're kind of being consumer friendly, getting rid of stuff that nobody bought and then decreasing the price. Good Apple? Apple. It's good. And then in case you care about space, Virgin Orbit has been approved to work on their first drop test using the Launcher 1 rocket, and that's gonna be exciting to see. I'm happy. I like space flying. So what is it about space that fascinates you so much? Yes, 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 yes. Um... Space! And then in case you like retro games, Nintendo Switch Online has added a rewind feature or will be adding a rewind feature to their NES games, which will allow you to pause the game and go back to retry something or do something slightly differently if you're playing the game, which is kind of cool, I like it. And then also Nintendo has stated that they're moving some of their Switch production from China to Vietnam to help offset some of the cost of the trade war going on between the two countries. And then HBO or Warner Media is technically launching a new streaming service, which is different than HBO Go, it's called HBO Max, and this is supposed to be the Netflix competitor rather than HBO Go, which is the Netflix competitor. It's supposed to have the titles such as Friends. That's gonna be the exclusive streaming place for Friends. I, and like CW shows and all of the like Warner Media stuff, I just, I feel like this is the diversion that will eventually just come back to everybody being on Netflix anyways. Like everybody's trying to pull their own streaming service, but they don't have, Probably besides HBO and Disney, they don't have the production library to make enough original content to keep everybody there exclusively. And so like, I feel like people are just gonna come back to Netflix. Maybe Disney might survive. Like we might have two streaming services, but Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, HBO Max. No, no and then, no and then. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to not doing hot news episodes because that's the end of this one. I'm Brett, hit the like button. I don't know why those are related, but also check out Displates at displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. Enter UFD as a coupon code to save 15%. Dope metal prints that look amazing. They feel amazing. They sound amazing when you knock on them and they mount with magnets. And for every display you buy, they plant 10 trees. You wanna save the environment, don't you? Anyways. Hit the like button, I said that already. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our news content. I'm Brett with the Hot News Channel. Love you too. See your smiling faces again tomorrow.
Fake News.